So what's up guys and welcome back to a brand new episode and as you can see we got something different today than a koi pond. Well we got two of those things. First of all, this is the owner Lars, thank you so much for having me here. Very welcome, thanks for coming. Wow, this is... I'm speechless. Absolutely yeah. speechless. Boy toy. This is unbelievable. As you have seen last week, Lars has also a very nice koi pond and a Japanese art collection. We decided to make two episodes because he has another hobby and as you can see this is, well, you can call it almost professional <laughs> instead of hobby. This is insane. Well Lars, thank you again and uh, please uh, tell me a bit more about how you started this uh, saltwater heaven. <laughs> yeah, well, um, first of all this of course is for me also a dream coming, uh, coming to reality. Uh, I needed a carotene, a carotene system, so uh, yeah, that's why I have two tanks. <laughs> I have the um, Dreambox 3.0, we have ozone, we have ultraviolet treatment, we have the Dosetronic, the Alcatronic, and we have the Mastertronic. Cooling to keep it between 24 and 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah, the, the, the crown on the hobby is uh, visiting the, the, the coral uh, shop once a week. Make uh, room, make space for some new corals, buy them and uh, enjoy it. That's basically what the hobby is all about. <laughs> Lars told me he can spend hours a day here. Every single day there's something different to see. He does most of the maintenance himself. But it's not just the size and number of corals that catch my eye. Lars has something very rare fish swimming. So you already showed me some very nice fish like that one. I, I, I'm not used to all yes. the names yet. For the people who follow me, I got some... Uh, I just started also within this hobby. And uh, well, this, this, this even looks better than my coral place where I buy my corals. So <laughs> I think he's doing something wrong or you do, are doing something very well. Take me to... Uh, your favorite corals and fish, and I think the people are happy to, uh, yeah. to learn a little bit more about it. Obviously, um, I like the SPS the most. Yeah. Um, maybe you can see the, wow. the the details in color of of um, the SPS is uh, just phenomenal, and this is by daylight, but. Um, you know, when when the lights go out, uh, we got some blue light for one and a half hour, and that wow. gives the whole tank a new experience. Yeah. It is Acropora that is uh, my favorite, of course. The, the the diversity of colors and species is because I like to go to uh, Bussingelide near Amsterdam to a humble coral shop named uh, Aquasan. To me he is um, yeah, the number one in the Netherlands. Maybe in Europe I only have experience with online shops. Yeah, he keeps uh, surprising me with uh, nice species, nice colors, good quality. Um, he has all the knowledge there is. Same counts for the fish. So uh, he makes me uh, buy one special fish a week. I don't have to uh, explain uh, the hobbyist <laughs> uh, how much fun that is. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. What is the reason that that one, that that dealer or supplier is your favorite supplier? Is that because of the diversity in in fish and the corals and uh, the new pieces he yeah. gets every single week? He 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 uh, gets updates twice a week with his stock. Uh, he has. Probably over 500 uh, Acroporas in stock, so he has a, a, a lot uh, to choose from. And he's honest, so um, in, in my startup phase with the hobby, yeah, he, he pushed the brakes every week, <laughs> several <laughs> times. Yeah, it's like um, a trustworthy party to work with. He's not uh, the uh, most expensive uh, shop, uh, but he has everything. Lars has several hobbies that he takes very seriously. In addition to the two saltwater aquariums, Lars has a great koi pond but also a great passion for the Japanese art and diving. 
In the end, we ran out of time to film the pond and the koi collection, so we agreed to film this next time. When you are a fan of nature, and that's what I am, um, yeah, this is the, the highest uh, you can get um, when it comes to keeping uh, animals. And um, if you know a little bit about uh, corals and sponges and anemones, um, it's a really sophisticated world. Yeah, it is. Actually, it is very simple, but yet uh, complicated. You know, 75% of all animals live underwater on Earth. That's and, true. Uh, I think we know about three to four percent of that, so it is, uh, yeah, big mystery. And uh, Elon Musk is uh, looking up and all day, <laughs> and um, yeah, we we scuba divers and we uh, reefers, so we like to uh, look down. Yeah. So, what is the size of the tank? Because. On this camera, tank. it's always a little bit different to see or hard to see, but let me zoom out a bit so you can see how big this one is. I think it's four meters wide, or? I think it's 350, to be 350. honest. And uh, we have uh, 1350 liters inside. Uh, you got one, two, three, four, five modules, and even some. Yeah, I, lights, but we created hybrids, so uh, these are the Philips. Uh, the Gen 2, mm -hmm. I have five of those, oh. and then I have some T5 uh, lights, eight of those, and uh, some LED on the uh, on the back. This is uh, the whole uh, spectrum all together because these LEDs they cannot cover the whole spectrum, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's it's hybrid lighting and uh, it's all connected to the Apex, so uh, easy does it. Well, but we got not only this one. You got more, <laughs> because you told me this was your quarantine yeah. project first. It is. But I can understand this is absolutely insane. There's the sea cucumber with the, with the spines. <laughs> Great, look at this guys. Absolutely amazing. Wow, this is my dream. Okay, so let's go to the, um, to the other one. This tank actually has uh, 1550 liters approximately, so it's a little bigger mm -hmm. with uh, more live rock and it's older, about uh, eight months. More uh, LPS corals inside here, so uh, the gonio and the alveos and um, of course a lot of buttons and ears. There's the snake, got to have the snake. <laughs> exactly. Well, my tank is a little bit too small to put that one in, but let me try to it's, zoom in. It is raised eating uh, frozen fish, so it's totally safe. It's really wow. nice to have. It's quiet, minding its own business. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. It's a good example of the, the, the beauty of the simple fish. You see the, 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 the orange fish. Yeah, great. You mean those? Yeah. Yeah. Let me zoom in this one. If so. you zo zoom in at night or when you take a moment for yourself and you zoom in those colors, then uh, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Great. So what is your favorite piece in this one? Um, it's the catafilia over here. It's a pink one with uh, blue uh, tentacles. Yeah, that's a sp very special one. Wow. Even the clownfish like it. Yes, they do. Great. And the filtration system and everything is below No, it's here. in the cellar, so that's very convenient, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's one floor down. Yeah, it is. It's the same setting as the other. Also with a, um, uh, a royal sump, which really makes a difference because it's yeah, it's German made, handmade, and that's a um, very big aspect of a successful uh, habitat. Yeah, the Mastertronic, the Dostronic and the Alcatronic uh, take away all the work, all the labor. Yeah. And uh, of course, it's all very pricey, but um, 
I can understand. I've been working really hard and I've been saving for myself. So uh, now for me is the time to enjoy. Uh, and to reward the your yeah. hard working and yeah. you're absolutely right. This one is also very, very nice. Yeah, there she is. All right, guys. So if you like this video, please um, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video. If you want to see more saltwater aquarium videos on my channel, um, we're going outside to the koi pond over there, uh, but you already seen that in the episode last week. So guys, thank you so much. Uh, Lars, thanks again. Uh, your hospitality, thank you so much. Absolutely amazing today. Thanks.